think it must be about the age of four when I realised that my brother could remember the past. And I was about the age of 12 when I suddenly twigged that people seem to be able to picture things inside their heads, maybe like a film screen. I am an aphant. I have aphantasia. This means I have no voluntary images in my mind and possibly even a fairly rare aim fact that I've had very few involuntary ones as well. I go to the shops and I get to the shops and I forgot my shopping list and some people might go oh uh, okay I can remember the piece of paper and I can see where everything is on the shopping list or some people might be able to go oh I've got the picture of my fridge in my head. I just buy duplicates of things I like and come home again. <laughs> it means I've got a fridge full of things I like. I mean, you open it, it's all beer and crisps. <laughs> That's very healthy, isn't it? <laughs> but it does mean that that living in the moment, there are downsides to living in the moment. Um, but that you know, not being able to envisage the future as a concrete thing, it does mean I wing it quite a lot and hope for the best. It also means, and this isn't the case for everyone with aphantasia, um, but I'm fairly resilient to trauma because I can't revisit it. It also means that should someone I love pass, I know they're gone. Maybe I grieve harder because I'll never, even in my mind, replay them again, which um, kind of sucks. But I don't think about it that much because I've forgotten I've thought about it again. <laughs> Sometimes having a dodgy memory is brilliant. It just edits itself out. <laughs> I probably more than most people use uh, reminder software because I know I can't remember stuff or, or picture myself doing stuff in the future. So occasionally my phone goes ping and I trust my past tense self to have made future self good things that future self needs to do. So trusting my past self even if I can't remember who past tense Brian is. I don't always remember my past thoughts particularly well. I'm a terrible one for changing my mind. Or maybe I'm a glorious one for changing my mind. Well, no. <laughs> I, I sometimes talk about time bending around me. The whole idea that without a concrete knowledge of the, or concrete visualization of the future or the past, that to be sat in the middle, it's almost as if causality is there for other people. And so, uh, you know, I assume that what I did in the past will leave what I did to the future, but because I can't imagine it, because I can't visualise it, I have to assume that it's not actually there. So, time bending. I, occasionally I, I you know, stand there, I, I look in the mirror, sometimes I'm shocked. Um, I, I have no idea that I've got a big white beard until I stop and look, it's brilliant. Um, occasionally people, do, uh, actually it was like last week, sat just in the pub, somebody just went, oh I wish I had a beard like that. And I had to think, right, who's got a beard? Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, I've almost got a little list of things um, that, that I know what I look like. I, I know I've got little sort of fluffy hair. I know I wear glasses, new glasses though. I, I keep on catching myself in the mirror and thinking, oh, they're really nice. Who chose them? Oh, it was you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I, I am Brian the Perpetually Surprised. But also, I don't remember what I used to look like. I don't remember young Brian. Um, Actually, I'm fairly fortunate by a quirk of genetics, one of my children looks an awful lot like the photos of me when I was little. But I only know that because somebody's held up him and the photo and said they look similar. I couldn't tell you what him or I look like. But the weird bit is, I'm actually really quite good at people and names. I can't describe what you look like. In fact, if I turn away, uh, perhaps you've got a grey beard too. And that's about as far as I go. As soon as I look around, I think, oh, there's Tony. It's lover. It's brilliant. Um, and I get excited when I meet people, when I see people and I remember their names and, and, and I remember their stories. But if I look away, you're gone. <laughs> people sometimes tell me that I'm a fairly decent storyteller or they tell me I'm a boring old fart. I mean, it could be both. Um, it's because I can't encode my past in visual remembrances. I can't remember walking down the hill to go and see my baby brother when he was born when I was age you know, two, four, ten, however long that old I was. I've got several brothers. Uh, what I can remember is the story about walking down a hill that I've told. And I, I, I can't be there, I can't bring it to mind, but as soon as I start telling the story, the story starts to roll off about you know, wearing a red jumpsuit and jumping in puddles. It may not be true, but it's the story I've remembered. And so I have a memory that records things in stories, so perhaps I can tell a story. 
but because of this 10 second sort of projected voice that I can do in my head, I can't really prepare the stories. The best thing to do is open my mouth and hope for the best. I like words because they're the only expression I have. And I think at a very, very deep level, it's only when I talk to people do all the thoughts become accessible to myself. And when I'm talking to people, hopefully, by using some lovely words, I get ideas to spark in their heads. And hopefully we become better just because of chatting, which is nice. It's just the simple truth that humanity is made of lots of different kinds of minds, thinking things in different ways. And the neurodiverse paradigm says that this difference gives the whole strength. We need those d different minds thinking their own ways.